again, this is Seriously Speaking, and I'm pretty pleased that the past two weeks we've been talking about politics, but we've talked to people who are opinion formers, we've talked to people who have written books about it. Today we're talking to people who I am on this side, supporters, and on the other side, people who have run or thought to run. So our theme really is inspiring change makers, people who decide I want to cause change and I want to inspire. But I say is either to support or not to support, to run or not to run. When we come back, we'll be meeting my guests who have experiences in all of these areas. If you don't go away. Welcome back and welcome to my guests. Pardon me if I start with Ify, because she's the only female here. That's it's okay. And she's the only first timer on this panel. Okay. So Ify Omoke is a lawyer by profession and she is a businesswoman who at some point in time decided that I'm not going to sit on the sidelines. I'm going to at least run for office. I don't know what happened. And sitting next to her is Obafemi George. I call him my chairman because I live in Etios, our local government, but he ran for the primaries. He didn't get it, but Obafemi didn't stop. He's still an active member of his party. Absolutely. Welcome to Seriously Speaking. Thank you very much. And of course, my Aburu that has grown with the times, who in recent times has gotten a lot of backlash in social media because of the kinds of things he's done in politics. But however, he remains one of the <laughs> most powerful social critics around. And you remain my little brother. Whether or no Forever. Omojua, thank you for being here. My pleasure. Especially for retweeting my tweets. My, the the pleasure few that I do. <laughs> you know. So first of all, let me start with Ifi, like I said. Ifi, at some point, you realized, I've done all of this, right? I want to serve my people. What was it that drove you to want to do that? OK, um, thank you. It's so nice to be here. Um, when I thought of it, I, in fact, I was just tired of complaining. Mm -hmm. I had, you know, taking my strolls in the morning, and I noticed quite a bit on the streets. And I was like, who is in charge? And um, suddenly, I realized that we've been sitting on the sidelines for too long. Why can't we do something about it? How can I impact better? And coming from the fact that I've led quite a team, and I felt that um, it would be good mm -hmm. if I take that step further and try being in the helm of affairs and um, take charge. So why did you think about, you're from Imo State. Yes, and I you're am. from Olu. Why did you think, okay, go to Olu? Meanwhile, you, have spent, you pay tax in Lagos. You spend all your money in Lagos. Well, that's the irony of uh, politics in Nigeria, which I think probably when our cohort come into play, we're going to change. Cohort, that is your generation. Yes, because um, if I've spent over 30 years here, this is where I know. In as much as I'm from Emo State, is my home place, is where I go during seasons. So it's not where, what I do all the time, but this is where I live. So mm -hmm. I think... Um, that conversation will come into play by the time we hope, have hopefully. that. I guess it's hope like that that keeps people like Obafemi going, right? Because I mean, Obafemi did it, I call it the American way, going around meeting his constituents. And yet, you were not, you were not selected at the primaries, but you still remain a committed member of your party. Absolutely. So do you, are you looking at that change that's going to come eventually to stick with what you're doing? Oh, yes, I am. I am the change that will come eventually. And I have to stay there to happen one day. Uh, one thing I learned when I started, I knew from day one that this is not a 100 meter dash. It's a marathon. And that was why I was willing to even stay that long within the party structure to become a party member, to become an ESCO member, before even thinking of running. It took me eight years. So I've studied the system, I have studied the structure, I have blended within the system, quote and unquote, before I came out to run. And because I didn't get it the first time, doesn't mean I'm not going to get it the second time or the third time. I'm, I'm in for a lifetime. So is that, is that a trait that's good? No, coming from this side, we don't know. You, 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 we go out to vote or we go out to change opinion. How do we know those who are in it for the long run or in it to win it? People like him are unusual because most people that are in for the long term feed from it. I know he's a businessman. I know the, the work he does. He earns his money and his living outside of politics, so it's, it, it's possible for him to do that. But more often than not, those that are in that system, that thrive in that system, they have a generation in that system that has fed off the fact that they, they are political animals. So, but um, George is a different animal entirely. OK, I just wonder, though, you see, but the, br the brunt of some of the things that we do is that we could be on the, on the wrong side of the people. That happened with you recently. 
What do you mean by be on the wrong side? Because people mean? claim that you, people like you, were the ones that are responsible for the kind of government that we have today. Um, see, the thing is, I think that's unfortunate because I'm just a small element in the reality of Nigeria. Oh, you should be um, feeling very proud. I feel like in 2015. That <laughs> you know, I, I, they, they can't to be, to be that I'm supposed to be humble. I feel like um, in 2015, Nigeria had a choice. In my opinion, this would piss everybody off that voted one way or the other. In my opinion, it was a choice between bad and worse. It was not a choice between good or bad. It was not a choice between good or better. In reality, it was a choice between bad and worse. And anyone could read an article by The Economist when they endorsed one of the candidates who eventually won. Mm -hmm. They said, they almost said they would put their hand on their nose and choose this guy. They didn't make the choice saying he's going to do something extraordinary, he's going to revolutionize the reality of Nigeria. They said, look, this other guy is a disaster. This other guy has some old ideas that may not work, but in the reality of this stuff, we would go for him. And I think that was a rational position to take, um, but I didn't run the government. Wait, wait, so what do you think about that? Because that. at the end of the day, it seems to me that when we vote, what are we thinking about? If our decisions, what's driving our decisions? And were you thinking about things like that when you thought, I'm going to run someday? Um, the assertion he just made, I think, um, is peculiar. But um, let's say that there's some element of truth in what he had said. But I wouldn't use the, um, the comment that worse. is um, bad to worse or... Bad um, and worse. No, bad and worse. Or no, a disaster. No, I wouldn't use that. Um, because having come this far, I'm yet to ascertain where we are. You know, but... Um, for me, what I'm thinking is, um, what drives the government? Or what drives the people in government? Or what drives the people in government? What are long-term strategy, like for Nigeria? Whether it's the worst government or the new one, what is the strategy? What's the long-term plan? So as soon as our leaders are you know, coming to focus, thinking in this line to know what the strategy is to move us from point A to point B, we would keep, you know, looking around, looking for the way out. So for now, I think we're still in the dark. Mm -hmm. We're yet I'm to sure, find I'm our sure way out. We're still looking disagree. for that light. Well, well, I mean, because you, you, you belong to the currently the ruling party. Yes, mm -hmm. we're on a journey. The, you keep the, saying this journey. Yes, because you see, the word change is not a miracle word. It's a process. It's, it's a transformational process. For a butterfly to move from larval stage to a beautiful butterfly, it has to go through the cocoon. It's a painful process. Prior to 2015, we had a peculiar structure of government. From 2015 up until now, we are trying to rebuild the economy. I tell people that, you know, prior to 2015, all we had was corruption. It, that was what was funding the economy, banking system, real estate, entertainment industry, creative, virtually everything. Mm -hmm. Now, that money had dried up, so everybody's feeling it, but it's a face. Give us some time. You begin to see the fruits of the seeds that this present government is sowing, infrastructure-wise, economy-wise. i give you, let me just give you one or two data. Number one, our dependency on rice has reduced. Well, that's the data here today. Above me, I really have to stop you. That's the data here Rice, we had already started this agricultural journey even before this present government. What do you say? I, I, I think that... Um, all of us have to come to the table and agree that Nigeria is not in a good place. We now have the highest, in terms of numbers, highest number of poor people in the entire world. And we're not the most populous country in the world, probably six or seven. We need to come on that table. I think too many times when we come on the table, we come on the partisan front. Um, you voted this guy, so you're responsible. We need to sit down and agree that, first of all, the political structure of Nigeria does not even work in a way that would lift a lot of people out of poverty. First of all, the Nigerian constitution of 1999, for instance, that treats our former leaders as though they are invalid oh, to provide for everything for their life. Because it's not like after you leave government, you become an invalid. So you should go earn your money. We could give you well, a stipend. But a situation like a where we spend up to 1.2, 1.5 billion naira every budget to take care of these guys. And that's at the national level, before you start to talk about the subnational level and the like. So this, the political structure doesn't work. But if we have conversations based on the versus reality, the binary reality of who you voted, who you didn't vote, we ain't going nowhere. But do you think so, though? About, because it's important for us, as we're doing this show today, I want people to understand that when I do go, you've registered for your PVC, fine. When you're going there, how are you going to vote? Well, I'll vote 
as regards to my conscience, what I feel, who you are, which I think it's very important that we know who we're voting So for. is it manifestos or people? Your manifesto, your people, your strategy, what is it that is in, in Niger, every Nigeria should be asking that question. What is it that you want to provide for us? So why did you what hold, why did you, for example, hold on being voted for? Why do you have a rethink? You're waiting now, you don't want to do it now. When is it going to happen? Five years, I don't understand that question. You know, because you had interest in running for politics. Yes. But you're not running this time. Or are you? Well, I'm not. Uh, well, there's some. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot here. <laughs> Will you run? <laughs> Election is still. Well, but if you're running, you should be knowing by now, yeah. Abi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Is well, like three months for time. now, that is in the coffer because um, I have someone straight up from my house that is coming out. So okay, so you are waiting, I'm to, waiting run later. to run later. You are not shelving it forever. Not at all. Mm -hmm. no, in fact, I, the more I think about it, I get fired up. It's just that when I look at the circumstances around, um, you know, within the country in terms of politicking, I can, I kind of. What scares you the most? Is it the money? Um, it's, the money is also important. The money is a global reality. The money is important, but that may not really be. But the intricacies of even getting in. You know, having your godfather, having um, what you call, there's so many issues at stake that, you know, just the little fact that you have to visit so many people to be <laughs> able to get an audience. Look, there's That's a reality. What, what, I no, think, but you, you have not even experienced this. Is it true that people visit many people? It's, it's, it's part of politics. We must come to that point where we realize that politics in itself, that's why it's, we call it political science. It's, it's a body of study. You need to go in there and see how it works. It's, not just, to, it's not just to complain from the outside. And when you get here and you see how it works, then you begin to appreciate the things that you need to do, basically. It's, it's not, yes, you have to visit people because in every structure, there are people that hold the structure. And you can't just walk in well, and take power like that. Well, you don't have to make like boots. I'll take a break. I'll take a break and I'll return in a moment and the conversation continues.